In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Good morning. Wishing you all a blessed have a new year. Uh, as you know, today is the last day of 1733. Tomorrow, we're starting 1734 of the a a a Anno Martiri. This is the Coptic year. And we refer to it as the Nairuz. Uh, so 1733 is ending today. 1734 is starting tomorrow. And we're tomorrow we're celebrating the Nairuz. And what it, the, God, the, the church is doing uh, uh, something like a drill. The drill in the sense that it's letting everybody know, be ready, just like the end of the year is coming, your life or the end of this age will also come. And the key point is that we are to be ready for that time. So if you've noticed all the readings this Sunday, and if you looked carefully last Sunday, and even if you come during the weekdays, you're gonna find all the readings are geared and, 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 and the, the main subject is be ready and watch because the end will come. The end will come. So 1733 is ending and 1734 is starting. Uh, and what, one of the things that we always think of when, it, when we think about the end of the age as we to you a little bit from what we just heard because it's really relevant to what we're going through today as we're sitting here today, Sunday, this Sunday. It says that he, when he sat on the Mount of Olive, the disciple came to him privately and, and then he, they told him, tell us when these things will be, when will the sign, you're coming and the end of the age. The end of the age is basically judgment day. And Jesus answered and said, take heed that no one deceives you. Be careful that you're not deceived. At the end of time, one of the tools the, in, the, in the toolbox of the devil that he uses a lot since Adam was deception. So he's saying, be careful. Don't be deceived for many will come to you in my name saying I'm the Christ. In other words, there will be a lot of antichrist. When, well, what an antichrist means is that somebody that takes place of Christ, antichrist. So that's what that means. So there will be this, there a lot of deception and people will say, I am the Christ. And he's saying, don't be this, and he will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars and see that you are not troubled. In other words, what Christ is telling us, that, that same Christ, by the way, that also told us that he's going to be betrayed by his disciple and that happened by Judas Iscariot. That same Christ, he said that I'm going to die in Jerusalem and it happened. He said that I was going to die by crucifixion and I was going to die on Passover. All these things, these prophecies that Christ said in Matthew 26 came to fruition. And he said that he will rise on the third day. And one of the promises, he said that he will come and he will judge. So the judgment day is a reality. And just as Christ uh, prophesied about these things and these things ha happened, judgment day will happen. So he's saying that in this time right before, there will be wars, rumors of wars. See that you're not troubled. Don't be shaken. You as a Christian, when you hear of all these things, you should not be shaken like everyone else of the, in the world. Don't be troubled. These things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So in other words, all these trouble, all these things will happen. That's not the end. Nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, fam and then there will be famines, pestilence, earthquakes, and various places. And all these are the beginning of sorrow. In some of the interpretation, instead of sorrow, it says, this is going to be the beginning of the birth pains. So what are birth pains? When a woman is, about, is, is pregnant and is about to give uh, uh, towards the delivery, the more time she's going towards the delivery, the pain is increased, contractions start, and as closer that she gets to that delivery date, the contraction will become more significant and more frequent. This is what birth pains is. And what Christ is telling us is that these disasters, these earthquakes, and when the time is close, the frequency is going to be, there will be significant, and also the frequency will be closer to each other, just like the contractions of a birth pain. Do you see that happening today? I mean, you watch the news, you find that, you know, Storm Harvey, Harvey came, but then right after Harvey, Irma, back to back, and then Jose, and then at the same time, an 8.0 in Mexico, which... They didn't hear of that for 85 years. And same thing with these storms. A lot of them, they, they, you know, this generation did not see that. Such a big storm. And, and, and millions of people are evacuated. And some of the people that are saying, 
that this, the evacuation of Florida, is one of the biggest evacuation in the history of the United States. So in other words, all these things are happening in the world, the, the world and the birth pains are, are coming closer, and, and we hear about all these things. So the, the thing is, when Christ teaches us this and tells us, this is gonna happen, don't be troubled, but He also tells us this thing to be able, for us to not be shaken by these things. One thing that shakes us today, and I want you to flip to uh, 2 Peter chapter 3. And we're going to go to verse 3. This is what we read today also. But we'll go through the... the, the we'll, we'll, we'll just study a little bit in that chapter because it's really important when it comes to what we live today. So one of the things that starts, basically he's talking to the, to the, the disciples, the, the apostles, and so on. And he's talking about the end days. And in addition to all these things, which we are all familiar with, there is going to be earthquakes, wars, rumors of wars, and it's happening in the world. But there's one thing that I want to, you know, draw your attention to in verse 3, 2 Peter 3, 3. Knowing this, first, scoffers will come in the last days, walking according to their own lust and saying, where is the promise of the coming? In other words, what, 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 what St. Peter is telling him, the, 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 those who he wrote this epistle to, is that at the end days, there will be scoffers. There will be people that will mock you. In other words, you will say that, yes, I am a believer, Christ is coming. He, he told us all these things and they happen. And he said that we will come and he will judge uh, and give each one according to his deeds. And why live accordingly? And I am waiting for that coming. People in the world will scoff, will, will ridicule how you think. You're, you believe in God? You really still believe in God? I happen to have been speaking to uh, several you know, leaders in Silicon Valley. And one of the things, these are the people that make things that Silicon Valley and, and a lot of the leaders, it's, um, the, he's there, you know, what I'm hearing is among them, it's very frowned on when you talk about God. They believe, no, 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 everything is uniformity. Everything is code. Everything is going to go according to code. And, and there is no judgment day. And, and God, are you really serious? And, and this is, Christ told us that. And among you in schools, they will scoff you. When you say, you're, you're, you're wearing a cross, you believe in Christ. Expect that. He told us that this will happen. There will be scoffers. There will be people ridiculing you. That, and by the way, when you look at Noah, when Noah spent 120 years building that ark, what were people doing? They were scoffing him. They were making fun of him. Look at this guy. He's a fool there. He's building all the, this ark. And, and, and where's the water? No water. And the thing is, we are going to expect these things. There will be scoffer at the end of days and people will make fun of you and will say, oh, you're... And what they're, what they're, what they're saying is that in the last days, they're walking according to their own lust. Another, they're making fun that there is not going to be a judgment day. With that mentality, there is no God. And because they walk according to their own lusts. What does that mean? A lot of people today have a very hard time with accountability have a very hard time submitting to authority. And because of their own lust, what they do is that they just erase God, erase Judgment Day, and ultimately what will happen is that at the end is that they, there is no coming. I do what I want whenever I want. So be careful and remember that at the end of age, there will be scoffers. You got to be ready for that and think of that and, 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 and not be shaken. Remember, one of the things that God told us that, and, you know, don't be shaken. These things should not shake you as a believer. Okay? For, and then we'll continue on. And, uh, and, and we're saying, so where is, the, where is the judgment day? Look, the fathers died and, and everybody is dying and he didn't come. So that means if he didn't come, look what it says, where is the promise of his coming? For since the father fell asleep, fathers, the, the, the prophets and, and, and the people of that era, all fell asleep, all died, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. In other words, the, the, their argument is, is because 
it didn't happen, it means it's never going to happen. In other words, is because I never had a car accident, that means it's never going to happen. So here what they're saying, because Christ did not come back, not the right mentality, but, but what it is, is that He will come back. He reminds them, Peter reminds them, for this they will fully forget. By the word of God, the heaven will revolt. In other words, God created the whole world, the whole everything by a word. And he, and he sustains the whole world by His word. He sustains us. That by, a, by the word of God, the heaven were of old and the earth standing out of water when He created the earth. The destruction that caused destruction on the earth was already part of the world. When you look at Noah, what, what was the destruction tool for earth at the time of Noah? Was the flood, was water. So what happens is, what he's saying is that because, you know, that God sustains us by His word. And remember, with His word also, when there was a flood, that was by Him. He, he, says, he, he ordered the flood because of the corruption of man. And then He's reminding them is that, it goes on, it says, by which the word then that existed perished being flooded with water. So the water flooded the earth and it was part of it. And he's going to remind them of judgment day because he's talking about judgment day. And then he goes on in verse 7, it says, but the heaven and the earth which are now pres pre preserved by the same word and reserved for fire until the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. And he's telling them that, you know, in the day of judgment there will be fire. And I want you to think what happens in volcanoes. Could that be the fire that is inside the core? Just like the flood, when the flood was, a flo when, when the water that existed, perished everybody except eight. Uh, Noah, his wife, his three sons, and his three daughters, and all the two animals. And, and the world perished, and, and, and except these eight, and there was, there was flood. And he's saying that, don't, don't think, don't, don't, don't say that judgment is not there, because it will come, and it will be, there's a fire element to it. And I'm just saying, could it be that it's from the core because God created the earth and it has all its, you know, the destructive power and says, a reserve for fire until the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. And here he's reminding them in verse 8, God is above our time. Don't hold God to time. He says, beloved, do not forget that one thing, that with the Lord, one day is a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. In other words, what, you know, when you're saying, why didn't, why wasn't the judgment day? Why didn't Christ come back and judge and then do all that? And here what he's saying is that, that, does, that doesn't mean because he said he's coming back and, and, and when we're going to think about it according to our time, because one day to God is a thousand year to us. And, and one thousand, so this is, when you really think about it, we're 2017, that is two days. So that doesn't mean that he's not going to come. He will come. And then that said, the, the Lord is not slack. In other words, he's not like he's very uh, slow to do things. He's not slack concerning his promise. As some count slackness. He's basically the fact that he didn't come. He is long suffering. He is basically patient for us. He's patient toward us. And ultimately the fact that he didn't come till now is that because he doesn't want all to perish. He says, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And when you look today, we're looking today the prophet Amos. And what was his message? Repent. The apostles say, repent. Jesus Christ says, repent. The apostles afterwards repent. And the message today at the end of the year, of the Coptic New Year, repent. Be careful, change your life. Don't just live according to whatever the sins that we're doing. And, and, and nothing should shake you, but we need to live a life of repentance. So when we move on further in verse 11, it says, therefore, since all these things will be dissolved. In other words, he's telling them, since this whole earth will be burned, and all these material things will be dissolved. What manner of person ought you to be? Uh, you ought to be. So if you know all these material things are going to be burned, how, what type of life you ought to live? What ought to, what ought to, what a life, how, how are you are to behave with, with your spouse, with your neighbor, with your church? How a person ought you to be? And here he's saying, holy conduct, 
and godliness. Holy conduct and godliness, that's what, he, that's what he's asking from us. When you look at holy conduct, is what is your action? How are your actions? Are your actions are according to someone that is ready for that spirit to be taken away from him and returned to his Savior? Or are we living lax? Oh, he didn't come today. That means he's not going to come tomorrow. I'll continue in my sins. I'll continue in my addiction. I'll continue in my bad habit. I'll continue not speaking to my family. I'll continue doing all things. How, what kind of person you ought to be? And basically he's telling you that you have to have holy conduct and godliness. Your actions and your act, conduct is, is, by the way, your actions. Godliness is your attitude. You are to live, a, have a holy uh, a actions, you, an holy attitude, and, and ultimately that you live ready for that day. One of the things that we, we talked about last week is that when we, when a part of being ready for that day is, and I mentioned this term, re regret proof your deathbed. Regret proof your deathbed. In other words, when you're on your deathbed, you've reconciled with those who you are upset with. You've lived your life and to, the, to the fullest when it comes to respecting your spouse, loving them, respecting your children and, and guiding them and protecting them, respecting and honoring your parents. You live your life that way that when you're on your deathbed, you don't regret, I wish I would have been nicer to my parents. I wish I listened more to my parents. I wish that I would have reconciled with that uncle that I haven't spoke to for many years. And one of the things is you're going to find life flies by and we are to live regret proofing our deathbed. And live life and, and reconcile with people. Have your actions are to be holy. Your attitude are to be holy. You live a holy life that is worthy to be, I'm ready. One of the things when you watch the news today, because of what's happening in the world, uh, Mayor Garcetti was talking to people yesterday, and he's saying, oh, he's seeing all these calamities that are happening in Florida and Texas. He goes, well, Californians, LA, are you ready for an earthquake? And he's telling them that this is going to happen. It's not a matter of, oh, it may, may, may or not. It will happen. Are you ready for that point? And here is an earthquake that has a magnitude. There will be destruction, but it's not the end. Are you ready for that time when that spirit is taken away from you? And this is the question in Nehru's, the church, the, you know, saying that the drapist drawing down in 1733, the new drape, a new year we're starting tomorrow, 1734. Just like that year came to an end, you're not invis invincible and your life will come to an end. And are you ready for that? So I pray to God that we all live a life of repentance, a life of getting, being ready. If you, if you have not spoken to somebody for something pity for a long time, well, today is the day. If you haven't been dealing with your spouse in a respectful way and honoring them and, and loving them, well, today is the day. If you haven't been respecting your children or, or, or dealing with them roughly or, and need to change things, well, today is the day. Today is the day to change because there is still breath in you. When is it too late? When that breath is taken. And the thing is, no matter how healthy you are, no matter how much organic food you eat, no matter how much you exercise, that breath can be taken away in seconds. Could be in a storm, could be in a car accident, could be a motorcycle accident, could be a shooting. No one knows the day or the hour. I pray that we live ready. We live ready that when, if it's my death day right now, that I look back, yeah, I don't regret it. I did my best. May God help us all uh, to, do, to, do, to do our best in that. And all the glory be to our God forever. Amen.